Imagine that you're living in 2030. Producing carbon emissions during the construction or use of a building is now heavily restricted, and the materials we've built with for centuries are being banned. Automation has become the norm. Transportation has been transformed. Productivity is key. Pandemic proofing is essential. Your fellow team members are spread across several continents. And energy efficiency is everything. With this new world just 10 years away, this is how to build in 2030. Our world is changing faster than ever before. Growing populations are increasing the demand for buildings like homes, hospitals and schools. City structures are shifting how we plan our infrastructure. A global pandemic is impacting every country. We're seeing seismic political and economic change, and our planet's climate sits at a critical junction. While the world we described at the start may sound far-fetched, these challenges are all coming to a head and simply have to be solved in the next 10 years. How we deal with each of them will shape our societies for generations to come. It's a context that's forcing construction to take a hard look in the mirror, but far from having to be buffeted by these events, the industry can actually shape what happens. Building successfully in 2030 will come down to two areas, sustainability and efficiency. Governments have set big targets for cutting carbon emissions by mid-century, and with construction now responsible for 40% of all greenhouse gas emissions, the industry has to act fast. Projects will have to be more sustainable in how they source and use materials, avoiding almost any waste. The construction process will need to cut its emissions, and once completed, our buildings must be highly efficient. Some countries are making progress on materials, with timber, other natural products and even recycled plastic starting to replace steel and concrete. The concrete industry alone now produces 2.8 billion tonnes of CO2 and accounts for a tenth of the world's industrial water usage. While some efforts are being made to create alternative carbon-neutral concrete products, a bolder shift will be needed. Timber from sustainably managed forests can be stronger than standard materials and more durable, quicker and easier to build with. Carbon dioxide is absorbed and locked into the wood and fewer electric truck deliveries are required when building with it. It's already on the rise and Finland is looking to double its use of wood in construction, while in France all new public buildings must be made from at least 50% wood or other sustainable materials from 2022. It's an encouraging trend, but some feel a more fundamental change in mindset is also needed. There is a bit of a skill gap happening in, uh, in the knowledge on how to build with timber. You know, Most of the architects of my generation, even younger, we've all been taught by using concrete and steel. So I think there's, there's a way to, to actually start educating yourself on how to do it best. There'll also need to be much more focus on recycling. While reusing leftover material from a previous build, for example, is already routine in some places, applying this across the life cycle of a building has to come next. You should actually start thinking about the recycling process and the reusability process early on in your design. These little things, you know, what kind of mortar you use, what kind of fixings you use, start thinking about that, that maybe in X amount of years you can start to dismantle it. Again, Europe is where many of the standards are being set. The European Union alone currently produces around 850 million tonnes of construction and demolition waste each year. But while this used to go almost entirely to landfill, some member states are showing what can be done, with Germany now recycling 68 million tonnes annually and the Netherlands reusing 90% of its waste material in new projects. Many of the buildings in Vienna's huge new district are being built with material excavated from a lake and a disused airport. Buildings will be subject to much stricter rules on energy efficiency too, perhaps unsurprising as they currently account for a third of all global energy consumption. The World Green Building Council wants all new buildings to be net zero carbon from 2030, offsetting any energy used with renewable energy generated on site. While it might seem daunting, the early signs in some areas are promising.
energy efficiency is hugely important. And we see this in, in building practices now. New buildings going up, they have much, much more stringent requirements about their efficiency, you know, thickened wall insulations, all sorts of um, interesting window constructions where you've got triple glazed and some other coating materials and really trying to make these places almost to what we would traditionally call as like a passive house sort of standard. The second key to building successfully in 2030 is efficiency. The shift we're already seeing in this area is partly being pushed from a world that needs construction more than ever before and has now noticed its low productivity, and partly being pulled by some serious tech advancements now digitising the sector. Despite rising population levels creating a higher demand for buildings, fewer people are choosing to come into construction and the sector has a severe shortage of skilled workers. This, combined with those technology advances, is driving automation. Robotics and artificial intelligence will be widespread by 2030, with machines working alongside humans and taking on repetitive or labour-intensive tasks. More companies will use drones for site surveying and data collection, while much of their statistical analysis will be dealt with algorithmically. While around 15% of construction jobs could become automated by 2030, new roles will emerge in managing and controlling our technology. So there's quite a few people looking at automating uh, certain uh, design processes, right? Uh, using AIs, for example. Now AIs, what they're good at is doing something that has been done before, right? You can, you because you need to teach an AI, you need to teach an AI with existing data. But what an AI is not good at is doing something completely new. The primary driver behind that of late, and it will continue into the 2020s, is more about the health and safety implications because the driver for those is so strong now that anything that a construction project can do to remove people from the construction process to automate is going to get a lot of traction, even if that costs a little bit more. The demand for buildings, drive for efficiency and rise of technology has given new life to the field of prefabrication or off-site manufacturing, where some elements of a building are produced in a factory before being transported to site for assembly. The approach can improve safety, cut costs, reduce construction timelines and raise quality. Able to get the benefits of standardisation with the adaptability needed for a range of sites and building types, off-site will shape how we build in 10 years' time. Modular construction, where prefabricated elements consist of whole building sections, is projected to be worth 130 billion US dollars in just the US and Europe by 2030, cutting build times by up to 50% and construction costs by as much as 20%. 3D printing is also trying to transform the speed we build at and is likely to become more common in the next decade, especially if successfully applied at scale. Further developments are inevitable in other categories of technology too. With more countries now mandating its use, information modelling will become commonplace in the run-up to 2030, alongside software that enables digital collaboration and helps to streamline the build process. Digital tools are already transforming paper-based workflows, allowing companies to cut down on waste and talk to colleagues and partners in other locations. They've allowed many projects to carry on during the pandemic and are likely to form the basis of our long-term working practices going forward, especially as the world continues to globalise and as project teams work together across continents. We have to show quality records, we have to show things that have been built to the correct standards, and inevitably that leads to a lot of documentation, but actually the tracking of every material and every bit of document and every bit of how the thing was put together in a right way, the workmanship and all of that has to go through digital. The next decade, yeah, I mean 2030, I could easily see paperless being the norm. Though 2030 may feel far off, for an industry that's always hesitant to evolve, it's not a lot of time. Our world faces immense challenges and construction has the power to turn the tide on many of them. Ultimately, being able to build quicker, more efficiently and with more respect for our environment will benefit this great industry and create a better world for us all. 
This video was made possible by Bluebeam. Learn more at the link below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, subscribe to the B1M.